Hello Keller Williams, it's Fred Moore again with another command tutorial video. In today's video, what we'll be doing is covering DocuSign, Compliance, and Commissions tab to get you paid. As always, we're going to log into Command using Chrome Incognito and head into our dashboard. On the top right hand side, what I want to do first is verify that I have connected DocuSign to my account. So I'm going to head into Settings. And this will be in the screen that shows all of the applications that are currently connected to command. Now I want to verify that DocuSign is in fact connected, in this case it is. If you have not connected it yet, you'll see a connect icon. It'll ask you for a couple steps, verification email, and then you should be good to go. From here, let's go ahead and create an opportunity. Handshake icon on the left hand side, bring us into the opportunities tab. Now an opportunity is as soon as someone raises their hand and says, I am looking to buy or sell real estate, whether it's in five minutes or in five years from now, you should go ahead and create that opportunity for them, whether they're listing, buying, or leasing. So you'll see here we have cultivate appointment active under contract and close. These are our phases that will never change. And inside of each one of these phases is stages. Those stages are customizable. Uh, there are some default ones in there that you can play with as well. And for now, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new opportunity. Top right hand side, we'll go ahead and click create. Now we'll choose our market center, our team name, the opportunity type here, whether it's listing, buyer, landlord, or tenant. Go ahead and select buyer in this case. Owner, if you're on a team, you can select the owner. Now client's name, you'll see that there's no option here. What we'll have to do is go ahead and type in a name and select from the drop down from there. Our co buyer in this case will be anyone that is related to the contact. So, in our contact card, this other test contact is their spouse. So, go ahead and appear in as the client. So, I'm actually going to remove these and add an actual person. So, now what you'll see here is the opportunity name is the name of your buyer and the opportunity type. Custom tags, what I personally use custom tags for are in this case buyer, I put in the towns that they're looking in. If it is a seller, maybe it's a short sale or relocation. Uh, so just give me a few different options so that I can search my opportunities rather quickly. Estimated close date, if you have an idea of when they wanna close or time frame, so maybe three months. Then we have our budget, so how much are they looking to spend? And then the commission rate here. The commission rate is going to be what you will receive on your side, not the total commission. So in this case, let's say 2.5%. Opportunity phase. Now we cannot create a new opportunity under the phase under contract. What we will have to do is choose cultivate appointment or active. And then if it already is under contract, we would just have to move it from there. The reason for this is they'd like us to create these opportunities prior to being under contract so that we can track from the whole, the whole life of the opportunity. So in this case, I'm just going to select cultivate, opportunity stage, again, these are all customizable. I'm gonna leave it as watch lead. Assignees, if you had people on your team or admins in your account, you can assign them as well. From here, I'm gonna hit create and it will bring me into my opportunity details tab. In this detail tab, we'll see the information we input already. I'll go ahead and hit the pencil icon and I can make some changes. So maybe I'd like to change the opportunity name, add some more tags. At this point, I wanna add a co-buyer. You can also change the contact name, the contact person for this opportunity, change the opportunity phase. So in here, we can change to under contract or closed. We can also do that on the last screen by dragging and dropping them when we're inside that phase. Change the stage, add some more detailed information, budget, commission, financing type, etc. Now, once Christine finds a property and we go under contract, what I'd like to do is add that property to the opportunity. So I'll hit the pencil icon here and add in a property. It'll auto fill all the information for me, and then I would go ahead and hit save, and that'll appear here for me. So from here, what I need to do is some 
documents and or write a contract, write an offer, I'm going to head over to my documents tab. This documents tab is also going to be where you do compliance. So on the left hand side, what we'll see is consultation under contract and closed. These are what are set up for us in our market center. There is nothing under consultation yet. Here are all of the items that are required for compliance for under contract. So some of these you'll see are black text with no underline and some are underlined. So I can go ahead and click on this and get a preview of what the document is that they are looking for. On the right hand side, I can go ahead and add a file. And what we'll see is a manual and then custom folder. So I can drag and drop from my computer or click here to open up and add files that way and then assign. I'm going to skip the compliance piece for now and we'll come back to it once we have a contract. In order to get to a room, we're going to hit start a transaction. Now, if you have dot loop also connected, when I hit start a transaction, it will get me a drop down to either do DocuSign or dot loop. In this case, I'm going to DocuSign. I'm going to sign in. And it's going to bring me into a brand new room. First thing to notice top left is the room name is also the opportunity name. So those match the custom ID is for tracking. It's also in for the email subject here. When you email it in, the documents will go right into the room. You can go ahead and edit here and add a photo. But what we're going to do is head into our details tab here. In here is where we can put in some information so that the contracts, when we open up a DocuSign form, will begin to autofill. So what I'm going to do is click on edit and start adding in some information. As I scroll down, we'll see we have sellers on the right hand side, seller two, listing agent, and then what you'll notice also is the buyer's information came in right from our transaction here, from our opportunity. So it communicates. Now, if I were to add a co-buyer, it will populate into buyer two. So the thing that's important here is their name and an email address. That's important for when we move into envelopes. From here, I'm going to hit save. Otherwise, if I hit cancel or went to another screen, I'd lose the information I put in. You can also add in your seller's name, listing agent's name. That way it'll auto populate into the contracts or you can leave it blank and we'll do it in the documents tab. So in here, top right hand corner, what you'll see is add and then actions. Actions, we can export the summary, add a folder, close the room or leave the room. But right now we'd like to add some folder, add some files. Now we can add them locally from our computer. We can add them through DocuSign forms through zip forms or through one of our cloud services. So for now, I'm going to select DocuSign forms. And if this is the first time you're logging in, it's going to ask for your NRPS ID. You can find your ID here and then select your association. If you don't have your association in here, you can simply click skip. So for my market center, when I hit skip, and there's no NRDS number to associate with it, I'm going to have access to my car, my Greater New Haven, my Keller Williams 815 Market Center documents, and my Smart MLS documents. Now I can go ahead and select, let's say, my car documents. And these are going to be all of the Connecticut Association of Realtor documents that I can use to write a contract. Now let's go ahead and search for the purchase and sale. Purchase and sale agreements. Go ahead and select the checkbox and add. Now, what we'll notice is there's an icon here that's blue and it says form. This form will always be editable. It will never have a signature. It will always have boxes for you to make changes to. So, in the future, after I click on this, fill it out, 
write an offer and it needs changes, I'll come right back into this same form, make the changes I need to, and go ahead and send it off for signatures again. Now we'll notice that we have our buyer's name came in. If we had put their address, it would have to. The property that we're purchasing, we put that in the details tab as well, that auto populated. The purchase price here, that actually came over from our opportunities. So we can go ahead and change those, write in the numbers that we need to. So remember this is the screen, we'll fill in all of the boxes for the contract, check off what we need to. And as we scroll down, all the way to the bottom where the signatures belong, you'll notice there are no signatures. This is not where we sign, this is only where we fill out our boxes. Once everything's filled out though, top right, we'll click the yellow button, save and close. Now, if we had disclosures, when we bring them in, so let's go ahead and add from our computer, and let's go ahead and add in, let's go ahead and add in the COVID writer here. Good timing, right? This one's already signed. This is from a contract that I'm using already. So you'll see signatures already on it. But you'll also notice that it's a PDF. It's a red icon here. So you'll know that this is flat. There is nothing to fill out in this. The form is where we fill it out. So now we want to bring these in for signatures. So I can select the circle here. And you'll see that we have copy, move, email, DocuSign, download, archive, and unarchive. Now, if there was a bunch of documents I wanted to sign, I could just go ahead and select all. It'll give me an option to combine them. And now I want to DocuSign. And this will bring us into an envelope. So the envelope detail page here, we'll see is the envelope name. So I'm going to rename this to purchase and sale Glenwood. This is for me to keep track of my envelopes. Now I have my documents. When I go ahead and click view here, what we'll notice is that this document is now flat. There's no boxes for me to fill out. So we gotta make sure that it's all correct, looks good, and then we can move forward. Same thing with this, it's a flat document. But maybe we forgot one of the documents in the room, we can click room docs and select the ones we forgot and add them. We can use a template that's been provided to us by our market center or ones we've created, or again, hit more and add them manually. Just below this, we'll see add recipients to the envelope. Now it was very important that we added our contacts into the details page so that we can use pre-tagged roles and room participants. With pre-tagged roles, what it will do is for this form, when we select this, we'll be able to select our sellers and buyers. So let's go ahead and select our buyer, it's Christine, and I'm gonna select the second buyer here just so that you can see in the next screen what it looks like to have two people, and then add selected. Now it's going to bring us in and we'll have one and one and this is going to be the workflow. So if you wanted Christine to sign first and Fred to sign second, you can simply just hit two and it will reorder it. So once Christine is finished, then Fred will get the email. On the right hand side, need to sign, need to view, receive a copy or specify recipients. And then we hit more and we can add a private message. So if you use dot loop in the past, down here at the bottom, what you'll see is an email message. This message goes to everyone. And just like dot loop, everyone would see the same message. In DocuSign, we can add a private message here. So Christine will see my private message and my email message. Fred will not see the message I sent to Christine. So down below what we'll see is email subjects. So this is what will appear in their email and then the message that we send them. Now let's say we need a little time, we have to wait or make some changes. We can hit save and close and go back into the envelope. We can hit actions to copy or delete it, but for now it looks okay. So we're going to move forward by hitting next. This screen here is where we'd be able to add in some fields, signatures, initials, date signs here on the left hand side, name, email, company, title, text, checkboxes, dropdowns, radios, and so on. Well, the first thing I want to show you here on the left hand side, if I hit the drop down, we'll see yellow for Christine and blue for Fred. Now, as I scroll down, we're going to see boxes that are yellow and blue to see very quickly who they are assigned to. 
Now they are solid as well, so when I click on it, on the right-hand side, what we'll see is a required field. If I uncheck that box and I click off, we'll see that it's just an outline that is not a required field. So depending on what it is, you can make it required or not required for that user. At the same time, let's say this is not, not supposed to be for Christine. I can go ahead and reassign it to the other user, which then simply changes it to their color instead of having to delete and bring in a new one. Now, why are these signatures already here? As I scroll down, we'll see that a bunch of boxes are already in place for these buyers to initial and all the way down sign. These are here because we use the pre-tagged roles. They auto-populated in here as a template overlay per se, so that we didn't have to manually bring them in. One thing you will know though, is as I scroll down to that COVID writer, this is a flat document. So what I'm going to have to do is actually add in signatures. So I'm gonna select signature over here, drag and drop it in, and now I can resize it. Now unlike dot loop, dot loop we did a width for the text, signature, or the size of the, the signature, and this we're just adjusting the height of the signature by making it bigger or smaller. And then we'll have to make sure that we also bring in the date signed box here. What you'll notice here is through Donna's signature, there is no actual signature, uh, date and time. It's only populating down here at the bottom. So it's correlated with this signature here. Now let's say I wanted to quickly copy and paste this. I can highlight it, right click and copy, and then right click and paste and it'll paste in the same location relatively. So I'll have to move it. So let's say I scroll up to this page here and I wanna add it to this box. I'm gonna hit right click and paste, but it pastes down at the bottom as the same page did the one before. So I'm scroll back up, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do paste to location. Now it'll paste right where my mouse is. Now when we look at check boxes and text boxes, so I'll go ahead and add a text box here, bring it in. I can resize it. Again, it's solid, so it is required that in this case, Fred fill it out when we send it off. But maybe I want it not required or read only. That way they'll see it, but they won't move and make any edits. I can add text by clicking and start typing. I can double click it to start typing or click it once and on the right hand side, add text in this text box. Now if I add check boxes, these will be where I can select multiple check boxes. So if we have items in here, so inclusion exclusions, let's say, I can check them all off. And when I add a radio and I add the same amount, it will only let me select one of them when I double click. So if you have a yes or no, or only want them to select one answer versus all of them, use radio versus check boxes. So if everything looks good and you're comfortable with being able to send this off to your clients, let's go ahead and see what they're going to see first. On the top right hand side, we have a recipient preview. Go ahead and click here. That's going to bring us up a preview. In this case, viewing is Fred Moore. Everything that he will see when he opens it up on a desktop the middle will hit tablet, what they'll see on a tablet, and then again on a smartphone. Now we can do the same thing for Christine, see what she'll see on a tablet, I'm sorry, a smartphone, tablet, and desktop. We can even go through by hitting start and selecting all of the boxes that they need to sign or initial. But what you'll see is it just brings in some characters this is not going to stay. They will not see this. This is just for your preview. So don't worry about what you do in here showing up on your client's screen. So I'm at the top right, hit the X button to close this window. Now, if everything looks good, this is where you would hit the send icon. If not, we'll hit back or top left. There's an arrow to go back. Again, save and close at the top right, and it'll bring me back into my room. 
So I'm in my envelopes tab, and what we'll see is the envelope we created, purchase and sale for Glenwood, and it's a draft. What we'll also notice is once we send it out, it will say waiting for signatures, waiting for your signature, maybe it's voided, maybe it's completed. So we'll have different banners here for us to know exactly what the status is of this envelope. Once an envelope is completed, we'll see it's green and say complete. And I head back into my documents tab. What we'll then see is a document here that says form, which is blue. Here's the writer that we brought in manually, which will be red. We will have another document here, which is red, and it will be the certificate of completion for the envelope that we sent out. Then we'll have two more documents. We will have this one that will be green as a separate document. It will say signed, and the same thing with the COVID writer. We'll have a green COVID writer, which is green. The green icon means it's signed, and it does not mean that it has a signature. It just means that it's gone through a completed envelope. So you're going to make sure you go ahead and open that up and verify that those signatures are there. So now once we have everything in here and we want to go ahead and send it off to our Cobroke, go ahead and select the documents that we want to email. And we can simply hit the email button here, type in their email address and send it off. Otherwise, you can combine them and download them and email them from a different email service. Now let's assume that we have all of these documents in we have a fully executed contract and now we need to do compliance for our market center. Let's head back into commands, into our documents tab inside of our opportunity. One thing to keep in mind when referencing all of this is that we have command, opportunities, and compliance. And then separate from that, we will have DocuSign rooms and envelopes. So they are separate pieces. You can use whatever resource you'd like for getting your signatures and document housing. However, for compliance, we will all need them into our documents tab here in command. So because we have a transaction synced through DocuSign, I could now click on add a file. So if you remember before when I clicked added a file, it only gave me manual and custom folder. Well, now I have a DocuSign option. When I click on that, what we'll see is all of the documents that are inside of my room. So I can go ahead and select this one here, let's say the COVID writer, and assign, and it will bring it in here, and I will have blue text to click on, and it'll bring up that preview just to verify that it's the correct one. Now I can print it, I can download it, in this case I'll close out of it. Maybe this is the wrong one, I need to remove it. I can remove or print, so I'll go ahead and remove that and hit remove or cancel. Once I have documents in place, what I can do is hit submit to market center. Now I can go ahead and add them one at a time here, or if I come to the top middle, I can add multiple files. Again, I can do them all manually, or I can click DocuSign, hit my drop down, and go ahead and select the appropriate documents all the way through, and hit attach. Then they will be assigned here. Simply hit submit to market center, and they'll go to compliance. If there's a document in here that you need to add that is not in one of these already created pre-populated form or items, line items, you can add item here. Name the document, select the type, additional notes, and then are we to get a manual DocuSign or custom folder, hit save and it will appear at the bottom of this list. Now, how do I know that it's been submitted, reviewed, accepted, or rejected, right? So once I submit it to Market Center, on the left-hand side here, this open will change to submitted. If it is compliance, it does come back, okay. It will say accepted in green, otherwise it will say rejected in red. If it is rejected, obviously we have to make some changes. So we'd come back over here and instead of remove, it will say replace. You can replace it, resubmit to Market Center, and then this will change to resubmitted. Now once we have all of this in and it looks good, the other thing we're going to need to do is our green sheet. And by green sheet, I mean we're going to be doing commissions tabs, so no more green sheets. First thing we want to do is get an accepted offer, so we'll head into our offers tab. We're going to add a new offer. We can name the offer. 
and then create that offer. We can still change the name here. When was the offer made? And when is the projected close date? We can then select a listing from KWLS or I can manually add that property. Then we'll hit select parties. You'll see that your buyer's information comes in along with yours. And on the right hand side, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we add sellers and associates name. And then hit terms. Now in the terms, what we'll see is cash and finance equals sale price. So cash is gonna be your total earnest money and the uh, down payment. So let's say we're putting down 50,000 total and financing 200. So we have a sales price of 250. I cannot manually type in 250. We have to add these two numbers up. Now for a percentage of earnest money, I can type in a percentage or I can manually type in a number and it will calculate the percentage. Now we have our option fees. We have how many days after to, the, the contract to terminate. We have contributions for services or settlement costs that we can add in here. And then we'll hit agent analysis. Now this is where you as the agent will be able to write in the pros and cons of this offer and the summary. This is what you can present to your clients on the selling side to give them a better idea of what the offer actually entails. On the buying side, you could put still some stuff in there, but there's no reason for you to send this off to your client. So we'll hit save. And what we'll see here is our offer and the option to accept or reject it. If I had the three little dots, I can add negotiations, edit the offer, analysis, send the offer or remove the offer. So in this case, the offer has been accepted and we wanna make sure we can do our commissions tab. So if I look here, this commissions tab is still grayed out. Once I accept this offer, my commissions tab opens up for me to be able to click on. So I'll go ahead and click on that and bring us into our new green sheet. Unable to submit contract date is required. So we'll see, we may get an error here, which is totally fine. And it'll walk through all the way down to see our numbers. So we have our sales price, our commission and our total commission, our commission percentage and our total commission. We'll have our contract date. So when was it accepted? The close date. And then you could add your co-broke, how much you're giving the other, in this case, the listing agent, how much should the listing agent be getting? And add that. But as we go down, we'll see we have the agent and then our breakdown of commissions from gross, royalty, company commission, deductions, and then the total check amount. Now at the very bottom, I'll hit add item, and this is where I can add in bonuses, concessions, deductions, inside or outside referrals. So let's say this is an inside referral from the agent in your office. It doesn't get your percentage, so you'd have to do the math. So in this case, maybe they are getting, let's say $900, and then we would type in their name, select and add. Now we'll see here, inside referral, $900 to Darren, and immediately the right-hand side over here, the summary, updated for us. So we'll see, pay to agents, 4,000, 3,000 to Fred, 9,000 to Darren, and 2,200 going to the office. Breaks it all down for us. From there, all you have to do is hit that submit button and it'll head over to your MCA for review as well. Again, I hope this all helps. If you guys have any questions at all, what I will also include is a PDF that I've created for my market center on a step-by-step -step process in order to do this if pictures are a little bit better for you to follow versus the video. But as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like it if you can. If you have any questions, never hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.